Hey y'all, welcome to the Messy Studio. Come on in and see what's going on. Welcome back. Got a little carried away and started working on this before I remembered to hit the record button. Silly me. I watched Steve Twidell, Temple Boy Turnings, uh, turn a baseball cap live the other day. And he said, okay, who's gonna try it? I said, well, I might throw my hat in the ring. I had never turned anything crazy like this. So I've got this little piece of hackberry. It's relatively wet. I don't know. I mean, it's it's been drying for, I don't know, two or three weeks, but that's not enough. It's not very thick. But I've got this little piece of hackberry. Only problem is it's got that not you can see where the, the limb was starting out over here and coming out over here and it got a little big so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this thing from a top of a milkshake basically and i'm going to hot glue it onto here i've already started that i'm going to finish hot gluing it on so that it makes me a dam I'm going to set it up at an angle like this and I'm going to fill this with resin because there's a hole in there. So I'm going to fill this with resin so I'll have a, a nice dome shape for my cap and I won't leave a nasty looking void in it. This could easily be a huge exercise in futility, uh, but we're going to give it a go. So come along with me and see what happens. Let that set up a few minutes and get nice and hard and I'll come back and mix up some resin to fill that void and give me some kind of a dome here. Okay, that looks to have set up. I don't see any holes. Okay, got my liquid diamonds. Just tacking down the corners of these pieces so they don't move. That's relatively stable and level. Close enough, I mean, for the girls I run with anyway. It's called Slate Blue Pearl. This is Deep Jewel Green Pearl. Okay, in an effort to try to keep the colors separated a little bit, I'm gonna let these sit and then I'll pour these in layer wise and hope they don't mix too much. Like I said, I'm gonna let these sit for a little while and hopefully they'll get a little bit thicker. I'm gonna go grab a bite to eat and I'll be back. Okay, these have warmed up a little bit, not much. I mean, they're not real warm, but they have warmed up a little. I don't see any leaks so far, anyway. And that's a good sign. I didn't want any leaks. That should be more than enough to give me the dome of my cap. All right, I'm gonna let this cure for uh, at least 24, probably closer to 48 hours. Processed a few hackberry logs this morning. These right here. 
cut them into lengths. I'm gonna let them cure. They're a little, they're a third as much long as they are big in diameter. So I won't have as much loss. Sealed the edges. So let those sit out there. It's hackberry, so I'm hoping it'll sit there and spalt. We'll see. Okay, I got most of the six tubes of uh, hot milk glue and the plastic cap peeled off of this. And uh, it's still a little bit fingernaily, which means that I can almost dent it with my fingernail. Can in a few places, just a tiny, tiny bit. But uh, after another day, I think this will be plenty hard enough to to go ahead and start turning. I think that's going to do a pretty good job. As it is, it kind of reminds me of an old Civil War hat, but it's not going to be that. It's going to be a baseball cap. So uh, I can't wait to see how this is going to look when I get it done or if it's just going to blow up into a million pieces. So I'll come back and hit it tomorrow. All right, this is all done. And so it's time to put it on the lathe and see if we can make a hat. <clears throat> I've measured this, got my center mark, and I'm going to put this in my step center. And then I will, as best I can, center this up. I want these points coming out the same over here if I can get them. Okay, so it's right there. And it's, oh, it's close. That's right in the middle of my fingertip. And that is right in the middle of my fingertip. But it looks cockeyed this way to me. That's about right, I think. About as close as I'm going to get it. I'm only going about 600 RPM here. I've already screwed it up. Came in way too far back here. Yeah, I messed it up. None of them have jaws that fit that thing. All right, before I do anything else, I'm gonna mix up some epoxy and fill that hole. All right, I'm gonna lift that cure up and we'll be back. Well, finally back out in the shop, it's been about two weeks, I think. Been kind of crazy and hectic around here, but that's the way it goes sometimes. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to 
I've been thinking of a way I need to turn this around and hold it I need to clean this up a little bit this tenon is actually too small for most of my jaws and too big for the others what I'm gonna do I've been thoughtin about it and I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this tenon down and then I will chug me up a, a glue block and cut a hole in it to fit this and then I'll just hot glue it into that glue block and then I'll be able to hollow out the bottom. First thing I want to do though the more that I can take off now the less I'll have to carve out later. I messed up and came down a little bit too far on here I'm not going to be able to put a whole lot of curve in this brim so it's going to be relatively straight. I'll put a little bit of curve in it but I don't think I'm going to be able to put much but that's okay too. Man, I gotta tell you I do like the way this liquid diamonds cuts. It machines so nicely. It's not nearly as brittle as... see nice ribbons? It's not real brittle like uh, polyester resin is. Now I gotta clean this up where the epoxy repair overflowed a little bit. Went over to my sander and sanded that off. Nice and flat. Okay, I'll start with that and then creep up on it. Just a rack of that. I should have had my glue gun heating up. Let that glue gun heat up and I'll be back. Okay, the gun's about hot enough. I put a touch on the bottom, stuck it in real quick, and now I'll put a seam all the way around and let it cool off for a little bit. You can get glue sticks just about anywhere. I get mine from Walmart. Uh, it's Gorilla brand. I really like them. They're not really any more expensive than the cheap stuff, and I think they hold better. Like this package of 45 right here at Walmart was, I don't remember, five or six dollars. It's not bad. Let that cool a little bit longer because I'm going to be putting some pressure in there. I'll keep the tailstock up when I first start going in is, and, uh, until it just absolutely in the way. Got a fresh edge on my Patience and Nichols 3 8 inch bowl gouge. And yes, I'm wearing my face shield. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah, that's perfect. I don't want it any thinner than that. Any thinner than that would be disaster. All right, I'm going to make one pass out here just to try to smooth it up a little. <laughs> In the words of my buddy Ron, <laughs> too much pressure for the hot glue. And that's okay. I didn't hurt anything. Uh, I will shape this with a sander though. I'm not going to try to cut that again. I'll just glue this back up and finish hollowing the inside. That was going smooth enough. It's only about 75 out here in the shop today, but 86% humidity makes it feel like 85. And that's about all I need to make this fat boy sweat. It was able to handle the centralized pressure all right. 
is when I got out here into this lateral pressure. Nope. <clears throat> and I knew better. But I'm always doing stuff I know better than. You've seen it. What I am going to do though, especially while I've got the tailstock up, I'm going to work on this area right here and true that up. I'm going to let this cure for a good 30-40 minutes because it's a little warm out here. So I'm going to let this cure for a while before I come back and finish hollowing out the inside. The back of this and the brim I'm going to have to shape with uh, well, by hand, basically. I'll be using my uh, angle grinder with a flap disc on it. See, I don't want to do any more of that than I have to out here now that, because I'm getting rid of this center stuff, but I've still got enough meat in here to help it, and as long as I take it easy, we'll be okay. Yes, sir, buddy, that's smooth as the proverbial baby's bottom. Now I can get rid of all of that. Got a couple of ridges to get out, but we're about done. We got a ridge right there. That's nice. I need to make that a little bit more round, but not much. It was a little flat. Now it's got a nice smooth arc. A nice smooth arc. Why is that so hard to say? I think that's coming along real nice, folks. <sighs> Sanding sealer, otherwise known as 50 50 mix of shellac and denatured alcohol. My boxer is looking at me like, why are we still out here? I didn't realize Hackberry had that yellow uh, tint to it. Yep. That most of the hackberry I've seen is spalted and it's got more of a blonde and gray. I'm guessing that yellow is what turns to gray. But this is my first wet hackberry turn, so. And I like it, it turns all right. Hackberry is considered a junk tree by homeowners and landscapers in this part of the country. And I suppose it is. This little piece of limb came off a tree my neighbor cut down. Oh, a month and a half, two months ago. He counted the rings after he took it down, 125 years old. 
and that's no finish. That's just, see that sheen? That's just after the Yorkshire grit, people. There's some wicked curl going on in here, but I figured there would be. I'm probably gonna make a jam chuck to finish the top of this, to, you know, put the finish on. so I couldn't curve the brim like I wanted to, but I'm gonna flatten this off a little bit. I left this high for a reason so I can put a, a button on the top, or cut a button. Okay, I've got me a rounded jam chuck in here. Got my tailstock with a soft touch on it. Put this piece of non-slip pad in here and bring the tailstock up. It's not going to be real easy to get this running true, see. So I'm going to eyeball it the best I can to start with. And use this method again. Except now I want to use a point, not just a part of my finger, because I don't want to be off at all if I can help it. That's pretty close right there, buddy. That don't look too bad at all. Give me a little pressure. I don't want to use too much, because I don't want to blow that out if it's too thin. Because I am going to have to Quiddle on this a little bit. I'm going to round this out a little bit and just leave a button over there. That's about the right size for the button. And that's about the right slope on there. I just need to smooth it out. I need to make the button narrower, but... Now I'll go back in here and undercut it just a little. Now, the, the slope of this is a little bit more than I wanted it to be, but it is what it is. Nothing I can do about that, at least not at this stage of the game. And there wasn't after a bit either, but it's okay. And for those of you that are thinking, well, that's a crappy looking baseball cap, Billy. Well, it's not perfect, true story, but if you're thinking that, <laughs> and I know most of you aren't, but there's that, there's that one person out there always, you know, and if you're thinking that, I got two words for you, okay, three words, you make one, and then after you do, send me the picture.
I never intended this to be perfect anyway. It's just a, it's basically just a see if I can do it piece. And unless something from here on out goes horribly wrong, I do it. Now, I've also learned a lot about how I might do a next one if I do a next one. If I do a next one, it'll be a full size and it'll fit me. But as my friends across the pond are so fond of saying, at this particular moment, I'm actually pretty chuffed about it. Rubbing the Yorkshire grid in on this brim without breaking my fingers is going to be a trick. So I'll do that by hand. I'm close enough and can hear it. Y'all can't hear it because of the fans, but I can hear this cutting up here. And it's, uh, it's getting finer and finer and smoother and smoother. This is, Yorkshire Grit is cool stuff, man. It is cool stuff. I like it, Glenn Sr. I haven't tried to microfine yet. See the sheen? You know, folks, I don't know that this needs a finish. Really and for true. What I'm going to do is let this harden up. Let the wax harden up for a few days. Or... I'm going to let this wax harden up overnight. What's left of the beeswax in here. And uh, I may and I may just hit it with some Howard's feeding wax and buff it out. I need to polish that little button up. But the rest of this looks really good. So here it is. My little baseball cap. About a third scale. As you can tell maybe one quarter, third to a quarter, somewhere in there. <laughs> it was fun, a challenge, something I've never done before. Didn't know how I was going to do it. About eight, one eighth inch wall thickness. Uh, surprisingly enough, as thin as it is, I don't know if it's because it's still a little wet or if it's because of the resin or a combination of both, but this thing is a little heftier than it looks like it ought to be. But I'm done. Now I can get back to that maple bowl and finish it up. Got the little top knot on top, just like baseball caps have. I haven't decided if I'm going to put a finish on it or not. I, I may just hit it with some fire, Howard Speed and Wax tomorrow and, and let that be done with it. Because uh, it's not going to be utilitarian at all. It's just an artsy piece and it doesn't have to shine. So thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share. And uh, more importantly, have a great day. Enjoy life. Enjoy your family and y'all come back.